selected to perform your utmost best. President Tinubu addresses inaugural Federal Executive Council meeting, acknowledges present economic crunch and the resolve to not fail Nigerians. Farmers cannot do without herders. Equally herders cannot do without farmers. Fair hearing must be given to all. Nobody should be given preference over the other. House of Representatives wades into farmer header clashes, inaugurates ad hoc committee to proffer lasting solution. Human resource is not Nigeria's problem. Manpower is not Nigeria's problem. We must get the economy right or remain in poverty. Voices get louder as Nigerian Bar Association holds 2023 AGM in Abuja. Hello and welcome to the Network News on NTA. I'm Naja Atutijani. Joining me from Lagos is Michael Olale. This news is also being streamed live on our website, nta.ng slash live. You can watch the replay on YouTube and do also follow us on all our social media handles displayed on the screen. President Bola Tinubu says under his administration, every sector will be accorded priority to achieve overall economic growth. President Tinubu, while addressing the inaugural Federal Executive Council meeting, acknowledged that times are hard and expectations are high from Nigerians. State House correspondent Musbao Nawahab reports. Monday is an unusual day for the Federal Executive Council meeting. So too are the new faces infused with some familiar ones in the council chambers. So exchanges of pleasantries were in order for the emerging team Tinubu. But with the arrival of a president, there is a sense of urgency. They answered the call and swore to so serve the nation. And the president clearly appreciates the enormity of expectations from Nigerians and that he presses home to the consciousness of the ministers. The expectation is high and there's tough time right now. We must work hard, commit ourselves and create a buoyant economy that will serve every Nigerian. We are from an employment level that is not acceptable. We are threatened by climate change. But to return things around, you have been selected to perform your utmost best. Hitherto, the President and his advisory council had covered some distance in the implementation of his policies and programs, and he wants the ministers to catch up towards actualization of various agenda, particularly the state of emergency on food security. We have declared state of emergency. What is your goal? Every one of you is a member of this team. No partitioning. We must start to produce for ourselves, dig ourselves out of the hole. Focus on education, health care, make social investment that is essential for the development of our people. While including every sector of the economy in his priority list, the president says his administration will leverage the human and natural resources in the country to grow more and satisfy Nigerians. On all of these, he emphasizes on sense of urgency. From the State House, Muspal and Wahab NC News. Meanwhile, the federal, the current administration rather, has formally rolled out an eight-point agenda to reinvigorate the nation's economy with security, poverty eradication, job creation topping the list of priorities, which are also part of the marching orders President Bola Tinubu gave ministers at the Maiden Federal Executive Council meeting. Again, State House correspondent Musbao Nawahab reports. Nigerians are looking up for the hope so promised to be renewed. It's a clear reality to the man in front who is eager to keep his promises. We have to make sure this country stay on the right path to succeed on behalf of over 200 million Nigerians. 
Nigeria. And the acolytes are literally fired up to walk the talk of their principal to turn around the socio-economic situation in the country with the campaign manifestos, the guiding principles. And we will now go away with the marching orders to refine further the targets in particular and within weeks to start rolling out policies and programs to turn around the economy and make things better for all Nigerians. To achieve this agenda, the administration says it will ensure an enabling environment for local and foreign investments while also creating jobs that will turn the youthful population of a country into a fortune. We will take it in phases. We are looking at different sectors of the economy that will contribute to this job creation. Chief among them is the creative industry and the digital economy. And then the agri sector and agro processing zone and mining, oil and gas. So Mr. President's vision includes the idea of harnessing the human capital of our youthful population to achieve the prosperity for everyone. To mobilize the social capital that is in our country, uniting us as a people to drive this transformation that is his direction uh, for the administration. The government is equally giving priority attention to other sectors including micro, small and medium enterprises as well as health, education and agriculture. To make sure that food is available, affordable and accessible. Right now the industry is faced with so many challenges. We have the challenges of insecurity, we have the challenges of flooding. Third challenge we have now is the, the invasion of migratory pests, killer birds and uh, insects that are creating havoc in the northern parts of this country. Uh, we have the harvest season coming up and we need to urgently tackle that issue. Mr. President's uh, uh, vision is to ensure that Nigeria recovers uh, lost time as quickly as possible and uh, Mr. President is desirous of ensuring that results begin to be seen on ground for the ordinary uh, for ordinary Nigerians. From all of these drastic and positive changes are certainly the desire of Nigerians and these ministers are positive that the citizens will begin to feel the impact of the current administration very soon. From the State House Musbao, then we have NC News. Vice President Kashim Shetima has charged members of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy Tax Reforms to develop a robust roadmap which will transform the economy of the country. The Vice President gave the charge when he received an audience members of the committee led by the Chairman Mr. Taiwo Uyidili at the Presidential Villa. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports that Vice President Shetima notes that the committee's role is a potent tool for resource mobilization, charging them to make recommendations which are quick in view of the nation's current economic realities. While assuring them of the National Economic Council's cooperation, Vice President Shetima charges them to also focus on domestic resource mobilization, saying fiscal policy and tax reforms are critical for meeting national aspirations, also taking global dimensions with global realignment of forces with the emergence of BRICS and current geopolitics. Chairman of the Presidential Committee, Taiwo Oyedele, in response, said the committee would focus on its mandate as directed by the president. Um, has the political will to follow through our recommendations. Um, they may not be the usual recommendations that uh, people are comfortable with, but we're putting the interests of our country first and all the way through. Uh, the second thing is Mr. President was very clear that he's not interested in committees writing reports. Um, he has said to us, as you recommend and you get the approval, go ahead and help me to implement. So that's why we have milestones, three of them. The first one is the first 30 days, which is where we are focusing on the quick wins, interventions around first subsidy removal, exchange rate stability. The chairman further gives assurance that the committee will engage with Nigerians both at home and abroad, as well as with all segments of the society. 
to reduce the cost of governance in Nigeria. President Bola Tinubu has directed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to freeze the processing of visas for all government officials seeking to travel to New York for the United Nations General Assembly without proof of direct participation in UNGA's official schedule of activities. In a statement via his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajurin Gelali, President Tinubu hinges this on the need to prevent sharp practices directing the U.S. mission in Nigeria, Nigeria's permanent mission in New York, and MDAs in Nigeria to be guided accordingly. Nigeria is developing a comprehensive, sustainable, multi-sectoral approach to stem terrorism and violent extremism in the Northeast. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribatu stated this in a message delivered at the ongoing workshop on challenges and innovations in countering terrorism holding in Abuja. Since the September 11, 2001 terrorist attack in U.S., violent extremism have grown in scope and sophistication, destroying lives and property in many countries, including Nigeria. In response to this deadly global security challenge, Nigeria is upscaling its defense capabilities through the combination of kinetic and non-kinetic approaches with success stories of deflating the fighting force of the terrorists that have ravaged the Northeast for over a decade, leading to mass surrendering of the criminals. Nigeria in 2017 developed the policy framework and national action plan for PCV. This policy framework is a complementary whole of government and whole of society approach for addressing threat posed by violent extremist groups. Realistic innovations in countering terrorism and violent extremism will require multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary approaches to develop comprehensive and effective solutions including counter-narrative, dialogue and mediation as well as community resilience. This workshop organized by the African Center for Strategic Studies, Alumni, Nigerian chapter, in collaboration with the National Defense College and other foreign partners is to identify challenges and potent innovation to stem violent extremism. This uh, symposium uh, seeks to bring in new impetus, new ideas, so that we can better manage security regionally. It's important that you look at the bigger picture. We have events like this to capture some things that are done well, to try to stay dynamic and proactive at addressing these challenges. The forum seeks to promote knowledge sharing, national security, sustainable development, and rule of law through research and consultations. From the National Defense College in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, a presidential delegation is on a facility tour of some government assets in the Niger Delta area, seeking measures targeted at curbing oil theft and illegal refining of crude oil. Gabriel Amunike reports that the delegation is led by the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Ribatu. Oil thieves sabotage the economy through the activities mostly carried out on territorial waters and along coastal communities in the Niger Delta. To bring this to an end, President Paul Ahmed Tinubu has charged security chiefs and other stakeholders in the oil sector to check these activities within the Niger Delta region negatively impacting the economy. Members of the delegation include Minister of Defense, Mohamed Badaru, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, and Ekin Lokobri, security chiefs. Their first port of call was Ukwa West local government area of Abbey State, where they assess the activities of crude oil theft. We have the capacity to produce over 2 million barrels of crude oil a day. We are producing less than 1.6 million. So we are talking about probably 400,000. 400,000 barrels of crude oil is going to waste. The visit to River State is to inspect oil installation and other national assets in order to obtain first-hand information on the challenges and prospects of national installations. It's tragic where people, their own wealth, their own resources, resources to all, few individuals will come in, destroy it. In the process, unbelievable loss. 
to not just the nation of Nigeria, but to their own community, to their own people. The visit of the Joint Presidential Committee on Crude Oil Thefts to the Niger Delta Pipeline is a first step towards checkmating vandalism and other criminal activities in the region. In Port Harcourt, Gabriel Amuniki, NTN News. Now to police affairs. The Police Service Commission has retired DIG's Damala Mohammed Moses Jitipo, Hafiz Mohammed Inwa, and Adeliki Adin Kabodi. A statement by the Commission says in the wake of the appointment of the Acting Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, on the 19th of June 2023 by President Tinubu, the Commission expected in consonance with the tradition of discipline and regimented culture of the Nigeria Police Force that those DIGs who were seniors in rank prior to his elevation, would apply for retirement. The Commission, having waited for ample time with no such application from any of them, took the decision to retire them in order to uphold discipline, which is the bedrock of the force. The Commission also approves the appointment of four Assistant Inspectors General of Police to the rank of Deputy Inspectors General of Police, subject to ratification by the board of the commission to replace the retired digs the newly appointed digs drawn from respective geopolitical regions of the retired ones are digs ibrahim saini kaoji daniel shokari pedro ayuba ikbeji and usman nagoko now this is the network news on nta stay tuned for more reports after some messages Thanks for staying tuned to the network news on NTA. We're talking recurring farmer header clashes now, which the House of Representatives says requires urgent attention and a multifaceted approach to mitigate threats to national peace and food security. Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives Benjamin Kalu, stated this while inaugurating an ad hoc committee to find lasting solutions to the conflict. National Assembly correspondent Mitairi Ipen reports. Recurring clashes between farmers and pastoralists in Yamatu Deba federal constituency in Gumbi State led the House of Representatives to constitute a fact-finding ad hoc committee to investigate all related cases nationwide. Farmers cannot do without herders. Equally herders cannot do without farmers. They have been there since the history of mankind. What happens that at this time, we are trying to become enemies, and our enemies are taking undue advantage and keying into it, killing our people, destroying our properties. With more than 60,000 lives reportedly lost to farmers' headers conflict in Nigeria since 2001, Deputy Speaker Benjamin Kalu advocates fair hearing to be accorded all parties towards concrete policy and legislative solution. You must do justice to all. Fair hearing must be given to all. Nobody should be given preference over the other. Because on both sides, they are very important to our nation building and national economic growth. We must also explore investment in agricultural infrastructure, such as adequate investment in irrigation system, storage facilities, rural road network, etc. We need institutional reform. States to begin to find out who their crop farmers are and who their pastoralists and livestock farmers are so that we can allot land. The committee resolves to visit conflict areas as part of its fact-finding mission. From the National Assembly, Mitairi Ikben, NTA News. Now to environmental matters, Cameroon's alert seems to outline the country's strategy to control flooding due to heavy rainfalls by opening the floodgates, releasing water from Lagdo Dam. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is therefore urging states and relevant government agencies to take necessary action over the plans by the Cameroonian government to open the floodgates of Lagdo Dam on the Benue River. Garba Nata'ala reports. Ladu Dam, located in northern Cameroon, 50 kilometers away, south city of Garwa, a city close to Benue River. Ladu Dam was built during the administration of President Amadou Ahijo, first president of the United Republic of Cameroon, who served from 1960 to 1982. The dam was intended to supply electricity 
to the northern part of Cameroon between 1977 and 1982, Ladu Dam was built and managed by a Chinese company, the China International Water and Electric Corporation, and International Power Company, AES Corporation, that runs the hydroelectric dam with the potential of reserving 7.7 .7 billion cubic meters of water. Over time, its capacity dropped, reaching a capacity of 1.6 billion cubic meters as at 2021. For four decades, Water released from Ladu Dam continues to affect states across Nigeria. In 2022, was hit where the prone states close to River Benue that bear the brunt after the opening of Ladu Dam and subsequently caused heavy flooding in Adamawa, Tarawa, Benue, Nasarawa, Koji, Anambra, Edo, Delta, and Bialsa states. Ahead of time, Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs alerted the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, warning on the adverse effect when water is released from Ladu Dam. This red alert raises concerns and the need to create more awareness to prone states and take necessary precautionary measures to mitigate the negative consequences. Similarly, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Dr. Beta Edu, has reiterated the federal government's commitment and preparedness to respond swiftly to mitigate the impact of the opening of the Cameroonian Lagdo Dam on neighboring states. This follows the alert on release of huge volumes of water from the dam in Cameroon, which has made states along the path of River Benue in Nigeria brace for possible flood disasters in the locations. Ruth Aguele completes the story. Flooding is inevitable and Nigeria over time has consistently experienced this disaster. But preparedness, response and mitigation have always been the game changer towards reducing the impact of flooding across the country. The release of water from the Cameroonian Lacto Dam to neighboring states poses a risk of an impending flood, especially in prone communities. This is why the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation is holding this coordination meeting with other stakeholders to put modalities in place while expressing federal government's readiness in terms of planning for an effective response to mitigate and reduce the impact of the looming disaster. Other stakeholders are of the opinion that states should begin to work out modalities to proffer lasting solutions in mitigating flood disasters across affected parts of the country by taking proactive steps to mitigate the impending danger. The minister also urges state governments and communities that will be affected to come up with plans through sensitization at the state's and local government levels as part of precautionary measures. Also, involuntary evacuation of persons in flood-prone areas is expected to commence with the provision of livelihood support to avoid loss of lives and property. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NT News. The spotlight is now on education. Tertiary students in Kano State are jubilating as Deputy President of the Senate, Barol Jibrin, has flagged off distribution of scholarship grants to all students of tertiary institutions from Kano North Senatorial District. Mohammed Ibrahim reports that the award is part of broad measures by the Senator to mitigate the effects of fuel subsidy removal on his constituents. Excitement in the air as the deputy Senate president rules out distribution of 50,000 Naira per student scholarship grant to tertiary student from his Kanu North Senatorial District. In Bayero University, Kanu, where the project is flagged off, more than 600 students are happy recipients. We pray Almighty Allah to continue helping him through his dis, uh, discharging his duty accordingly. The chief of staff to the deputy senate president says the gesture is part of numerous efforts to cushion the hardship being experienced by his constituent in the wake of subsidy removal. Uh, his uh, benevolence is you know hinge on, 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 on what is currently happening that uh, many parents are you know crying about uh, paying school fees so that's why he has decided to intervene. And uh, as we've said, his intervention is not only in this area, but in agriculture, in social development. All students from Kanu North Senatorial District 
in all tertiary institutions in the state will be covered by the scholarship scheme. Muhammad Ibrahim, NTA News. In another significant step towards enhancing higher education cooperation, Gambia's Minister of Higher Education has met with the Acting Executive Secretary of Nigeria's National Universities Commission in a bilateral meeting aimed at furthering collaborative efforts between the two countries, with both parties underscoring the historical ties which have bound Nigeria and the Gambia in the field of higher education. During the meeting, quality assurance and capacity building emerged as focal points, with Nigeria's experience in maintaining high standards and quality in higher education becoming a subject of interest for the Gambia. For a well-informed, well-educated uh, uh, citizenry, and that cannot be done if it is not anchored on higher education. And here, here to see how best we can continue working together and uh, building capacity, uh, especially at uh, postgraduate level, or uh, our different uh, you know, uh, staff in our, uh, from our different satellite institutions. We will expect a formal uh, request uh, from the side of the Gambia so that we can begin to, in the succeeding uh, months and weeks, begin to uh, take a look at numbers, uh, the institutional affiliations, where these scholarships could be attainable, as the meeting concluded, both parties expressed optimism for the future of the collaborative effort with a renewed commitment to building on existing foundations of cooperation. The Minister of Arts, Culture and Creative Economy, Hanetu Musa Musawa, says she has not issued any official statement regarding her NYSC status, contrary to reports on some social media platforms. In a statement issued by the Deputy Director Press, Ministry of Information and National Orientation, Suleiman Haruna, the Minister disassociates herself from the report, purportedly titled my personal statement on my NYC status as a serving minister, unquote. The minister urges the public to be cautious of unverified information and expresses appreciation for support, solidarity and understanding. Yobe State Government says it will spare no expense in further shaping the destiny of its people through sustained delivery of development infrastructure and services in tune with the dreams of the founding fathers of the state. Governor May Malabuni made this declaration at a retreat for the newly inaugurated State Executive Council. Elizabeth Hila Lamido reports. From ruins of prolonged years of Boko Haram insurgency, when May Malabuni took over in 2019, Yobe State has witnessed mass deliveries of development infrastructures and social services. This retreat for the newly constituted State Executive Council aims at scaling up their technical competence and positive mindset to further fast track delivery of more development legacies. I am convinced that with the quality of the carefully selected resource persons and presenters, we will at the end of this retreat be better equipped and prepared to face the collective task of developing the state with much bigger commitment and passion. Resource persons at the retreat were emphatic that truthfulness, innovation, self-confidence and goal-achieving mindset are necessary guarantees for successful leadership. We must anchor our leadership on survival of not only the individual but the state. The retreat is timely and this is what we have been looking forward to make emphasis on teamwork. We are learning a lot. We, 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 we intend uh, to put into practice all the things that we planned. And the need for us to think about leadership as, uh, as a responsibility, as a manner to do it. The retreat is the first official interface between the governor and his cabinet members after their inauguration some days ago. In Kano, Elizabeth Villa, NT News. Healthwise, Nigeria is set to introduce the human papilloma virus HPV vaccine for every female child from the ages of 9 to 15 years across the country. 
This underlines the commitment of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency to defeat cancer. Ulushe Adiabo was at the biannual Religious Leaders Review meeting in Abuja, where the matter was on the front burner. In the World Health Organization statistics, Nigeria has an estimated 14,000 women diagnosed with cervical cancer and more than 7,000 dying from the disease every year. The federal government has now fixed September 25, 2023 to introduce the human papilloma virus vaccine to prevent cervical cancer. Why the introduction of new vaccine into Nigeria's health system comes with its own limitations. The synergy between health authorities and religious leaders has over time helped with meeting the desired target. We will therefore need the support of the faith community as we roll out the federal government agenda for the health of our people. We realize what we need to do, what we must do together to succeed and make this country a better country. I think we are equipped with that knowledge and that's why we are here together. This assignment of ensuring all eligible female child receive the HPV vaccine across the country is a tax these leaders are familiar with and they are already identifying with the program, especially on advocacy. We have used the churches, the pulpit, uh, religious leaders to communicate those messages and to share with mothers and fathers that their children are better off when they are vaccinated. In some instances, uh, they actually pay uh, more notice and accept more uh, teachings from their religious leaders than from orthodox medicine. The biannual review meeting is also to examine all efforts of religious organizations in providing primary health care services in Abuja, Ulushaye, Adiagbo, and CA News. Michael is standing by in our Lagos Network Center for more reports on the network news. Michael? Good to see you, Najatu. In a bid to advance academic excellence among children of active and deceased police officers, the Police Officers' Wives Association, POA, has presented educational grants to the four set of beneficiaries in Lagos. Lynn Neneke reports that in addition to this, fund for the rehabilitation of some police primary schools was also presented by wife of the Acting Inspector General of Police, Elizabeth Kayode Egbetokun. These 35 students are the first set to benefit from the Police Officers' Wives Association Educational Grant instituted to ameliorate financial burden of officers who, in most cases, struggle to meet their children's educational needs. Wife of the Acting Inspector General of Police said the grant will help unlock potentials of beneficiaries and actualize their dreams. Each scholarship awarded today it's a testament to your potentials and I am confident that you will make the most of this opportunity to excel and contribute meaningfully to the society. Initiator of the program and chairperson of POA Lagos Chapter is optimistic that the grant will assist in promoting education among youths in the cycle of beneficiaries. The Convention of Empowerment true education led me to embark on a comprehensive tour of some police primary schools in Lagos State. Or if we have to, out of our integrity, struggle to keep the future of our children bright, or brighter than it is, and we have leadership within the ranks of our wives. Beneficiaries expressed appreciation to POA for the gesture. It would make life more easier for me in my school activities. I don't have to worry anymore to run back to my parents for emergency again. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. They add glamour to our screens, put smiles on the faces of viewers, both in the conventional and social media space. These unsung heroes, popularly called content creators, were in the spotlight at the second edition of the Nigeria electronics media content exhibition and awards 
Jogboko Lari reports that there was ceremony by Electronic Media Content Owners Association of Nigeria was at the was the climax of a three day stakeholders party. Some are household names in the industry, creating award winning content for decades, while others are anonymous but well equipped with ideas. Under the auspices of the Electronic Media Content Owners Association of Nigeria, MCOAN, NEMSIA Award 2023 enables numerous content providers grow to sustain the media and creative industry. With the team, the awards rewarding excellence in content creation, organizers say the three-day stakeholders' engagements will fully maximize the potentials of the industry by exploring all the value chain, promote synergy and inclusion. We are inspired by one another, we are challenged by one another, so that when you put the seal of MQAN on your content, you want to be sure that it's of the minimum quant quality. We are saying as content producers, come, do business, excel and then get rewarded, recognized and rewarded for your efforts. The highly competitive awards in 36 categories and encompasses all the media platforms will linger on in the memories of the recipients. Many veterans in Nollywood and media production were brought to the limelight with various accolades for their contributions. It requires a lot of hard work, resilience, consistency in what you do. If we have been shooting for the past two years and we are just getting uh, rewarded and awarded, that means that it really pays to be consistent. I am filled with a lot of gratitude because I do understand that at the end of the day everybody is a winner. I do understand that content production is not, a, it's not child's play, it's not for the weak. My first contact with this business is television. You know, I started from Nigerian Television Authority actually. So, you know, I need to give this credit. In fact, I need to dedicate this award, you know, start to Nigerian Television Authority. There was no dull moment with various activities, including comedy and musical performances. In Lagos, Joel Mokbola, NC News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Time for some messages and when we turn, the news continues with Musa Abubakar who is standing by for some business updates. Please stay. Still watching NT Network News. Let's talk some, some business. The National Assembly is set to commence the process of amending the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative Act 2007. This is to give the agency the teeth to bite as it goes about ensuring monies owed the federal government by companies in the extractive sector are remitted. This was as Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Petroleum Resource Downstream, Ike Guno Ogochinere led members of his committee on oversight to the NIT House. The NIT Act 2007 is saddled with the responsibility to develop a framework for transparency and accountability in the reporting and disclosure by all companies in the extractive industry of revenue due or paid to the federal government. Going forward, NIT seeks to be empowered to prosecute defaulters, retain a percentage of revenue generated from collection, and have data and information from NIGHTY reports, as well as robustly engage stakeholders. And more importantly, to seek how do we now empower to using the instrument of the parliament to see how we can reject some of the provisions of the act to give them more legal framework and strength not only for them to be able to uh, back but also to buy it in ensuring that there's punishment that can be meted out to offenders what it will do to our revenue generation what we do to our remediation in terms of implementing what we have recommended what we do in agencies and companies sitting up to their responsibility what we do to tax collection in the industry, what we do to royalty payments in the industry, what we do to the ongoing reforms will be very, very, will be very, very unimaginable. 
And now to the capital market, the equities market closed first weekday of trading bullish as investors gained 324.26 billion naira. The Russia index climbed 0.90% to close session at 66,151.38 basis point. A total of 311 million shares worth 3.9 billion naira were traded in 7,193 deals. Market capitalization advanced to 36.2 trillion naira access holding plc transnational corporation plc and nangwete sugar refinery plc were the top trades at the end of the day's transaction that's all on business news today next up new happening